You can add lots of beauty and value to your leather work by incorporating exotic leathers into your designs. In this program, we will show you two different methods to create great looking exotic inserts. In front of me, I have several templates that I've cut out of poster board. Uh, I have many more, by the way. I use these for both methods of exotic inlay. So uh, we'll start by using this one right here, and we'll do the first method I'm going to show you on this belt blank. I have dampened my piece of belt strip here, and I've used the overstitch wheel to uh, put some decorative stitch lines on here. And now I will place my template in the position I would like to have it. And then I will take my stylus and carefully trace around the outside of my template. Next, I will take my swivel knife and I carefully cut the lines that I just traced. It is very important to stay exactly on your tracing lines. Next, I will use a large sized uh, checkered beveler and we will use that and bevel inside of these lines as you see me doing here. And we'll go all the way around on the inside. Make sure you get these corners down very well on all of them. And after we have finished our beveling, we'll set this aside to dry. I have decided to use a piece of uh, python skin and I will now take my template that I had for here and I will flip over the python and place this uh, template where I think I can get a fairly nice pattern and I will take an ink pen and I will trace around my pattern very carefully. And now I will cut out this piece of snake with the shears or a sharp knife. I have decided to use a stencil knife. This especially works good when we're doing a, a straight line like we have on the ends. and then carefully cut with your knife. After your finish has dried, it's, we need to take a stencil knife or similar instrument and rough up the area inside because we're going to apply cement in here. We want to make sure that we get a good bond. So we'll rough this up. Uh, you can use sandpaper for the larger areas. To cement the snake skin onto the belt, we're going to use a permanent contact cement. Now we will, first of all, Make sure that our piece is going to fit properly and it looks like it will so now we can apply cement now. I'll use a, uh, an inexpensive paintbrush to apply the cement. I'll very carefully get it all the way up to the cut where we beveled 
and make sure I get good coverage. After you have applied your cement, you can clean your brush with cement thinner, or you can just dispose of it. This is why I'm recommending an inexpensive brush. And then after we do the, the belt, then we can use the same brush and apply cement to the snake skin, making sure that we get up to the edges. This is going to be very important when we cement it in place. After we have applied cement to uh, both the snake and the belt, we'll sit this aside and let it dry until the cement gets tacky on both surfaces. After the cement has uh, dried to where it's tacky, then we can very carefully turn it over and I would suggest starting in the point and very carefully make sure that everything fits properly and this looks pretty good so we can rub it into place. Then we'll take a modeling tool the modeling tool, we can even secure it even more. Now we will take the same large beveler that we used earlier and we will put it on top of the snake skin in the cut and stamp. This gives you a very, very tight bond. It also forms the insert so that it appears to be coming up through the leather as opposed to being cemented on top. Be sure that you get it tight down in all the points. And this is how our piece looks after we have finished it. For the second method, we I have cut out a buckle front uh, cover here out of leather using another one of my templates that was based on the size of the steel buckle blank. First, we will dampen the leather and uh, Then I will use my uh, wing dividers, put a line on here about an eighth of an inch from the edge. This would be the stitch line. I have decided to uh, stamp a border on my buckle blank. Now that I have finished uh, stamping my border, I can use one of my templates in here or I could use the wing dividers. In this case, I think I'll use the wing dividers, which I've already set to the proper width and I'll make an opening based on the shape of the buckle just by coming around here with my wing divider. Now I will use a a sharp stencil knife and I will cut out the center section. Now we can remove the center part and this will become our plug. Now I will use a very small size edge beveler and I will bevel around the inside of my cutout as you see me doing here. We will do this on 
both the top and the bottom. Now we will prepare the plug and we'll do that by taking a wing divider and putting a mark about a sixteenth of an inch in from the edge. Then we will take a shears and carefully cut away that one sixteenth of an inch. And now we will take that same small edge beveler and knock the edge off of our plug. And now this part is ready for dyeing and finishing. Next we'll select a piece of our exotic leather and this looks pretty good right here so I'll turn it over and lay my uh, buckle blank on there and I'll take a pen and I will mark around the outside and the inside. And now I will take a shears and cut my snake skin about halfway between the inner and the outer marks. We do not want it to go past the outer edge. And of course we need it to go completely over the center part. And here are the three main parts of our assembly. We've got the, the plug, the outer part, and the snake skin. And we'll start by using the same contact cement as before. And we will completely cover the back side of the snake skin. And we will cover the front side of the plug. Now, immediately we will turn our plug over while it's still wet and we'll set it in the center of our snake skin. And we will leave it dry now in that position. And while we're waiting for that to dry, we can cover the back side of the frame. While that cement is still wet, we'll take the assembly of the plug and we'll push it in there. And you'll be able to feel when you're down in the opening. And then we will let it dry in that position. And now our buckle front is all complete, ready to assemble to the other parts of the buckle.